the Okay, I'm gonna start at. Uh, uh, I'm gonna start at. This is kind of long. Just come on with it. Uh, I'm gonna start at 3 and end up at 13. That's good. Revelation 11 and 13. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. They shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, the two candlesticks. Oh, we in sackcloth? Yeah, the two witnesses mainly is talking about, you know, both kingdoms, northern kingdoms, southern kingdoms. Keep going. Standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, devoureth the their enemy. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Oh, yeah, because just like Isaiah says, no, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. You know what I'm saying? So there can't no way fuck with us, man. Because we out here, as long as we're out here doing the work of the Lord, and, you know, in truth and sincerity, doing things the right way, the Lord will protect you, man. So that's why you can't be scared to go out here and teach. You gotta have faith that the Lord is gonna protect you, man. If you if you ain't got faith that the Lord's gonna protect you, that means you don't even believe. Go ahead. The work. Oh shit! I'm sorry. Dude, we're crazy. We ain't afraid of these people. Go ahead. These have power to shut heaven. That in rain, not in the days of the prophecy, have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plague, as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their term of testimony, I heard a testimony, word testimony goes back to the word testicles. Yeah, testicles. Yeah, it really goes back to the word testes, which means your, your balls. Yeah, a woman can't testify. I still think in a lot of courts, even around the world, yeah, the woman ain't allowed to testify in court. That's why it should be. Go ahead. The beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Oh, yeah, because there's a great city. I'll read that the whole scripture right there. And their body, and the dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. But also our Lord was crucified. Yeah, because the Lord was crucified in Jerusalem, right? And who was he crucified by? Israel. But we're in Israel and Jerusalem, that's a people before it's a place anyway, right? So America is spiritually known as uh, Sodom and Egypt. So this is Sodom. They crucified the Lord. These people out here, they're the ones that crucified the Lord. They're the ones that said we have no king but Caesar. They don't, buy, they don't listen to Barack Obama's words before they listen to the words of the Lord. They'll listen to the decrees and the laws of the government before they listen to the laws of the Bible, won't they? They'll put that goddamn license plate on that car, and they'll never question that. But they'll question every last law in this Bible. They're a bunch of faggots, you know, a bunch of bitches. That's what these people are, they're a bunch of bitches. A bunch of faggots. I hate them. The Lord hates them. <laughs> I thought if you get angry, you would. The day of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see the dead bodies. Oh, I was about to say, oh yeah, because I'm going to fall back to that point. It said that America was spiritually known as Egypt. Remember earlier how we read in the Ten Commandments and said that Egypt is the house of bondage? And how the pyramid, the Egyptian pyramid is on the back of a dollar? Which again further proves that America is the home of the beast. This is Babylon the Great, the kingdom of Satan. Keep going. In tongues and nations shall see the dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer the dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall sit this one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life of God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them. Which, which saw them, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying, Oh, they heard a, oh, they heard a voice from heaven, just like in Revelation 18. Read it. Hey. Come up hither. Come up hither. Come up where? Up in the sky, up in the chariots. That's where you get that song. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot, come for to carry me home, take me home. To the promised land. They ascended up to heaven. They ascended up 
to heaven. That's why Revelation 18 said, come out of her, my people. It said, I heard a voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. They ascended up to heaven in a cloud. In a cloud. Yeah, that's, man, that's, a, that's a great scripture. Yeah. And the enemies beheld them. That's just terrific. <laughs> and the enemies beheld them. They feel out. They feel salty. You see them get beat up. They just feel salty. That's that's right. That's an amazing. Read that scripture again. You gotta read that one again. That whole part about come up in there and all that. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. In a cloud. That's a, a chariot. A so-called UFO. And the enemies beheld them. Woo wee. That's beautiful. We get beaten up. They're like, Oh, me too. Me no. Boom! Destroyed. Turned into a pile of ashes. It's gonna be like in that. You see that movie, The Knowing? They, that movie, The Knowing, got uh, what? They pretty much got it all at the Book of Revelation, and it showed you how they had actually had angels. They was all white angels in the movie, though. They was looking all pale, and they came down, but they was like beaming people up in the movie. But all kind of other people got destroyed by fire. The knowing. They actually had angels come down beating people up in that movie. I got Nicolas Cage in it. And it's, it, it, yeah, it's pretty much describing Revelation. It's pretty much what it did. I mean, that's where they got it from. Obviously. So Paul. Go ahead, come on. Wisdom of Solomon 3 what? But the souls of the righteous are in, in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they sing to God. In the, the sight of the unwise. Because these people are unwise. They look at us like we're stupid. But we're the ones that's actually studying. We know we know what we're talking about, man. Okay? The Lord has blessed us with wisdom and knowledge. We know what's going on. Just like you ain't going to see us get afraid and get all confused and bewildered when some Al-Qaeda attacks pop off in America. There's a you know, like some terrorist attacks. Everybody's all we meet from France, and, but they don't know that you know the government funded ISIS. They don't know that these people are they're losers. They're peons. They're sheep. They're cattle. They're they're useless eaters. There, there ain't no lights on. Dumb asses. They're dumb asses. They're dumb. That's an insult to the ass and to the mule. You know what I'm saying? A mule got more sense than these people. These people are dumb as hell. Go ahead with that. Read that again. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. And, and their departure is taken for misery. And they're going from us to be utter destruction. But they are in peace. It's like Revelation, how we they say we die. They're all happy and shit. Uh, give you a gift and shit. But they're sweet to the floor came down. They're they going to be salty then. Though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised. Oh, the hope was full of immortality. I got a scripture for that. I got a precept. Oh, uh, oh this goes, I got some fire. The Bible ain't no joke, man. This ain't no motherfucking joke. Actually, this is a joke. Actually, it's a really funny joke. Actually, the joke's on you, motherfuckers. We're going to be laughing. Yeah, it is a joke. Actually, it's the funniest joke I've ever heard in my life. When we see these fools burning on fire, what, what do you want to do when you see your nasty ass baby's mom who been running, talking shit for years and years? Then you just see this bitch on fire, hair on fire, eyeballs melting, tongue melting, lips, lips, nose melt right off her face. And you just gonna laugh at her. You just gonna laugh. It's like that big, ha ha! Like a Dave Chappelle laugh. Yeah, got him. God. That's the ultimate got him. <laughs> that was the ultimate You just gotta let it all hang out. You just gotta let it all out when you laugh like that. And you can't fake it. You gotta be real. They did. You gotta be real. Let me read this. Uh, Revel uh, John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world. And actually, that world, world. When you look it up in the Greek, it's not talking about the whole world. God loved the whole world. No, the word used there is the word cosmos. And the word cosmos is a Greek word that means an orderly arrangement. 
That's why bitches get cosmetic surgery. It comes from the same word, cosmetic. They want to put their raggedy ass face in order. Because they still looking all ugly. So they want to put some order in there. That's why it's called cosmetic surgery. Same thing with this. So the cosmos don't mean the whole world. It means an orderly arrangement. Uh, even if I was reading, uh, I should do a, a sit down lesson on this. I was reading the Battle of Troy. What's that? The uh, Iliad and the Odyssey. The, the general, the, the dude that was the head of one of the armies, if you look that up in Greek, it was Cos Cosmo Kratur, meaning he was, he was the ruler of the, it means a, a order, he was the one putting shit in order. So the word cosmos means order. So God don't love the whole world. He loves Israel, okay? And he don't even love all of Israel, only the elect. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, which links up to what you just said, right? We search for immortality. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Right, because that's why we come out here and teach, because not everybody's getting condemned. And a lot of people, most people, they get condemned. And the word condemn means con, means with. It's prefix, con means with. Dim is the same word as damn. You just change the vowel, it's the same word. So uh, to, to condemn somebody means with damnation. Uh, what does it say? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So how does God go and save everybody if he's condemning people? See that? So so people, they always try to bring out that John 3.16, but they, they, they don't keep reading. All you got to do is read to the next couple of scriptures, and it breaks it down. It said, but he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name. Ha, what goes that? He had believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And the name is Yahweh is the Father's name, and Yahweh Shah is the Son's name. Not Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You know how they get up in the church, they just say, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I seen with that Kirk Franklin, the gospel singer. I seen uh, an article just came out on the internet that he said that the churches are uh, too quick to condemn homosexuals, and he, yeah. he's pretty much saying we, we need to be accepting of homosexuals and realize that well, you know that they need love too. <laughs> and he's one of the top. He loves singing about sweet Jesus, don't he? I hate that. He's a fucking faggot. He, he's a big faggot. Look at him. Come on, come on. It's 2015. He's a faggot. He's out of there. Man, let's check this out. Uh, John 3 and 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. That's why when they crucify the Lord, because our people have crucify the Lord. The Romans did it physically, but it was our people, the Israelites, who had the Lord put up on the cross. And then they, what did they say? And, uh, and Pilate said, what, you want me to crucify your king? He said, king, we have no king but Caesar. Crucify him. That's how wicked our people are. They, they, they chose darkness rather than light. And we should get that in John when they could choose Barabbas for the Lord. You know where that's at? towards it and you find it. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. We fought surrounded by evil as no good people. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. That's why when people come up here, they get mad because they, they hate what we're saying. They, they want to argue with us. They want to fight us. That's because their deeds are evil. You know what I'm saying? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. They people hate this word. That's why you could go to any you go to any family dinner with your family. If you start talking about the Bible, they're gonna tell you to shut it down. They're like, you gotta stop talking about that. We ain't trying to hear that shit. 
You can talk about anything else. You can talk about Buddha, Hindu, Aleister Crowley. You can talk about worshiping the devil. You can talk about Lil Wayne's the greatest rapper. and You can talk about anything, but if you talk about that Bible, they're going to tell you to shut the hell up. Or they'll kick you out of the house. They don't want to hear it. Like, they, nah. really, they really don't do that. I was trying to teach them about War 3. Nigga put his headphones in. Like, you don't care for it, but um, War 3 out here. Like, yeah. Oh, they gonna care when it's too late. Yeah, like, oh my god. It's a rap for them, but they just have, they, just, they fate is sealed. It's death. Absolutely. Check this out. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are rotten the most high. That's the point. You know what I mean? What did you have? John 19, he won. Then Pilate therefore took Yahweh and scourged him. And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it 